There's just something enduringly cool about Italian bikes, isn't there? Well, here's a new one, Villa Trestina's latest creation, the Filanti. A beautiful disc brake aero bike that is also impressively light. I'm gonna tell you all about it, give you all the details, and I'm gonna weigh it with the GCN scales of truth. going to begin this video with a poll and my favorite game would you rather so i want to know would you rather have the villia filanti aero bike we have here or villia's lightweight option the zero a bike which i checked out last year if you uh, follow the link in the description you'll be able to uh, vote and let us know now before we go into all the details about this the filanti let's have a quick recap and learn a, sort of where it's come from and how we've got to this point Villa Trestina is one of the oldest bike brands in the world, having been founded in 1906 by Pietro Dal Molin in Bassano del Grappa, which is a beautiful little Italian town at the foot of the Monte Grappa. Myself and Manon were there earlier in the year before lockdown two happened. Anyway, the uh, first aero bike that Villa made was actually in 2010 and was called the Imperial. This was followed in 2013 by the Cento 10 Air, or Cento Dieci, to give it its proper pronunciation. Um, also, you've got to do the, the hand gesture as well. I'm reliably informed from Alan. This was then refined uh, and given a, a, an update in 2016. And you may remember Filippo Pozzato riding this bike in the Giro d'Italia. We did a GCN video on it, and it got a fancy new uh, one-piece aero bar and stem cockpit at that point as well. The bike was then further updated with hydraulic disc brakes and refinements to the carbon layup to improve it as well. And then this culminated in the Cento 10 or Cento Dieci Pro uh, that then came out. And you may remember recently myself and Hank riding the second tier frame set, the more affordable uh, Cento Dieci SL on our coast to coast ride uh, earlier in the year. Which brings us nicely onto the Filanti. Now the big headline is that it is a disc brake only aero bike and perhaps the biggest visual change when you first look at it is the loss of the junction box area which was located on the down tube around here on previous models this is now in the far end and instead you have this more sort of streamlined continuous lines going on on the down tube nice there's some really nerdy and interesting engineering details going on with this bike so we're going to start with the head tube when you look at it front on it's just really, really narrow. And being narrow, that's really important in creating a smaller silhouette and reducing the frontal area for aerodynamics. And the way they've been able to make the head tube so narrow on this bike is, is pretty interesting. So previously, on the previous, the, the Cento Dieci uh, Air model, it actually had a D-shaped steerer. And this was in order to accommodate the internal routing of the cables and create space for them. They've done away with that. They've gone back to a round steerer tube, but they've still kept the cables internal and still kept the head tube narrow. And the way they've done this is apparently they've engineered their own super fine bearings into the head tube. Most bike brands, when they uh, use bearings in their, their headset. They use just stock OEM bearings, but engineering their own components to make the design fit their specifications. It's kind of like the sort of thing we, we, we see from Italian supercar brands like Pagani. You could imagine them engineering their own specialist components like this. I think it's really cool. But the steerer tube still remains a pretty standard one and one quarter inch tapered uh, steerer. And then onto the actual bar itself, the one piece bar and stem is said to be around 50 to 60 grams lighter than the previous one. So quite a significant weight reduction there. And it's available in five different sizes. They're not sort of nice round numbers, but this is a deliberate thing. They've done a lot of ergonomics research, I'm, I'm told, and they've actually come up with more consistent sizing for uh, people throughout the range. Overall though, very neat and tidy front end cockpit area. On the rest of the bike, the changes uh, and improvements over the Cento Dieci are more subtle. Now, Villia performed extensive wind tunnel studies in refining the aerodynamics of the new bike, but it admits there are limitations to just this kind of approach. And that's because 
A wind tunnel gives you incredibly consistent and repeatable uh, and clean data that can act as a brilliant baseline for when you know, improving the aerodynamics of an object. But the real world situation is far more complicated. Out in the real world, you have constantly changing wind speed and direction. You've got the aerodynamic interactions of the rider, perhaps other riders around as well, and just other objects out on the road. And it's because of this that Villier actually performed subsequent studies. They looked into this and have deliberately and precisely changed the shapes of the tubes. Now this is really evident on the down tubes, that's what I'm going to show you if you take a look. On the trailing edge of the down tube, on the previous version, this was a squared off edge, it was quite a, a sort of sharp edge, whereas now it's much more rounded at the back. Now Villia reckons that these softened edges on the tube profiles help the boundary layer of airflow to better stick to the tube profile at higher yaw angles, so basically crosswinds. So when the air's coming in like this, at an angle and hits the tube, it stays attached longer and creates a smaller, cleaner wake at the trailing edge of the tube, resulting in less drag. And now many of you will be familiar why we have these style tube shapes and not full aerofoils on bikes, but in case you're not, it's basically because of the pesky UCI rules again. They don't permit us to have uh, full aerofoil tube shapes that taper to a, to a point. Uh, instead, that's why bike manufacturers have adopted these either truncated aerofoil tube sections or aerofoils where the sort of tapered back section in the cross section is effectively removed and you have this sort of flat back uh, shape. Something else cool is the fork. Now if you look at the fork crown and the fork blades, they're quite kind of bowed and uh, quite far away. There's a big gap from the blades and the wheel and according to Villiers, this is deliberate as it helps separate the, the fork blades from the turbulent airflow that's created from the front wheel and, well, apparently makes the bike more aerodynamic, which is pretty interesting. But then it's something we've seen on other bike designs as well. And if you look at the, the fork blades as well, I like this detail, you'll notice that the sort of crown of the fork and where the top of the fork blades begin is perfectly level and in line with where the stays stick out the back of the frame as well. And this is deliberate. It's so that the sort of seat stays and where the stop of the, the seat stays begin are sheltered uh, from the wind by having this sort of continuation, by having them behind the fork crown. And this is said to help, again, reduce that frontal area in the, the silhouette of the bike. Another interesting detail on the fork is how asymmetric it is. The right fork blade looks to be almost twice the size of the front one. And this is to cope with the asymmetric forces involved with the braking by having the, the caliper on that right fork blade. It's to kind of avoid torque steer under braking. But I mean, when you look at it like this, it really is quite striking just how much, you know, how much more beefed up this right fork blade is. And something that you won't be able to see is that I'm reliably informed that there is actually a liquid crystal polymer that's also integrated into the composite um, of the carbon as well, which is said to just help with vibration dampening and just increase a bit of compliance. There are three different colour options available on the uh, Philante SLR. So you've got this beautiful metallic red finish, which I, yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of that. There's also an iridescent grey and black, if that's what you're into. There's also a range of build options as well. This one's fitted out top of the range, Jura Ace DI2. Villiers' own filament wound tubeless carbon wheels, 42 millimeters deep with Vittoria tubeless tires on there and a nice Cellar Italia SLR uh, boost saddle with the uh, carbon rails on it. Very nice. But if you're a purist who's currently screaming at the screen saying, this is heresy. An Italian thoroughbred racing bike can't have a Japanese group set on it. Well, there is a, a Campagnolo uh, group set option as well. I'll tell you what though, it's, it's time for a free up sound check. Let's, let's see what this bad boy sounds like. Ooh. Nice and, nice and smooth. Um, it feels very light, but the claimed frame weight from Villiers is 870 grams for the frame, which is only 90 grams heavier than the Zero SLR 
their lightweight climbing bike, which is oh, pretty astounding. The cockpit is 365 grams claimed weight and the seat post 100 and 65. And one of the ways in which Villiers reckons it's able to reduce the weight of this bike over the previous one is just refined carbon fiber layup techniques in which they can be more efficient with the use of carbon and reduce the amount of resin that's left in, in the carbon frame and the components when they're finished. If you want to find out a bit more about this and you know why that's important, then you can check out my video about where carbon fiber comes from and how it's made. But I know why you really, I know what you really want to know, and that's the total weight of the bike. Well, unfortunately, I left the GCN Scales of Truth back at GCN Mega Base, and I didn't bring them with me, so... <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back, uh, back into GCN Base, so that I can actually weigh the bike and tell you. Let's go. Right, back in base. Just gonna weigh the bike now. 7.09 with clinchers for an aero bike with disc brakes. That's very good, isn't it? I mean, it does feel light. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the stunning Villiers Falanti SLR. And if you have, then please give it a like and let us know your thoughts on this bike down in the comments section below. Hopefully, we'll be able to get out on, a, uh, on an adventure on it soon. And, well, I can't wait to, to ride it. It looks mega. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye.